I just got a brand new metal lathe. In this video, I'm gonna give you my complete process from uncrating to cleaning up the machine, installing all of the accessories and getting it ready for use. Gavin Gee here from ultimatereloader.com. You've seen a lot of Precision Matthews equipment here on the channel, including the PM949TV Bridgeport clone milling machine. We've got the PM1440GT, which is a lot like this machine. We've also got the TL1660. This is the brand new PM1440HVT-2. This is a lot like the PM1440GT, but it is heavier, it has a very, very solid cast iron base. It has wider ways, is generally beefier, and also has variable speed. I'm very excited about this lathe. We just got it off of the crate, and that involved uh, removing all of the protective film, that sort of stuff, unbolting it, lifting with a couple of straps. We set it on rollers, and we got it rolled here into the shop. Pipes is a great way to roll a machine. Uh, with this machine and the casting, we had to basically keep one pipe ahead each time and push. We got it rolled in. Very easy to use uh, crowbars on the concrete floor to kind of twist the machine and to get it pushed into place. So here it sits. This is exactly how the machine came, just what it looks like out of the crate and set onto the shop floor. Next, what I'm gonna do, I like to use a spray bottle and WD-40. We're gonna spray down all of the surfaces that have the protective coating on it. It's a thick, oily kind of compound. We're gonna get all of the accessories, the four jaw chuck, the three jaw chuck, the DRO out of the boxes, and I'll give you the summary and we'll show you the final result when we're done. Well, here it is. The machine is up and running. This thing is absolutely awesome. I totally love the variable speed. We've got our RPMs display right there. Really good stuff. Okay, so that's kind of a skip ahead. When we got the mo machine moved in, one of the first things that I did was to get the jack screws in place and get the cast iron feet underneath. And what I did notice is there's not a lot of flux in this cast iron base. So I would actually have one corner slightly uh, off the ground until you know we got those jack screws and feet in place. And what I like to do for leveling the machine is I take a couple of parallels and we just put them on the ways here and then take our machinist level. This is a, a Starrett that uh, one division on here is five tenths uh, over a foot. Anyhow, what we really care about, and I, I usually run this all the way at the back of the machine and all the way up here towards the chuck to get kind of the maximum difference that we're gonna see there, is uh, if we're off to one side, we just wanna see if we're tilted slightly, that that angle is exactly consistent. We get the same bubble position at the back as we do in the front so that we don't have any warp induced onto the machine. Okay, and that is carefully done by adjusting those jack screws and then locking them in place. And we're on a nice concrete slab here, so that makes that process straightforward. Okay, so with the machine level, it was then time to do a very detailed clean. And like I said, I use a spray bottle of WD-40 and a whole bunch of these blue shop towels that are very cheap and work really well. And once you get the, the sort of protectant saturated with WD-40, it wipes off real easy. So I did the ways, I did the entire carriage and saddle, I did the tailstock, uh, this lead screw is something that requires a little bit of, of special attention. And what I like to do is to take a piece of rope that fits tightly into the troughs of the threads there and to turn on the machine and to just kind of pull on both sides of the rope to ride in there and to collect all the glop out of uh, the lead screw. And then some of it is pushed to the, to the tops of the threads. So I just take a rag and follow along to get all of that out. And that is actually a periodic maintenance item that I also like to do on the lathe because when you get those half nuts engaged, you don't want a bunch of grit acting as an abrasive and wearing out the half nuts and or the lead screw. So then we've also got the, uh, the power feed screw and then also the directional control that we have down here. And those have to be uh, kind of cleaned up as well. A little bit still here in the troughs. Looks like I'll have to come back and hit that one more time. We followed up with a, a little bit of whey oil. This is mobile vector number two. 
and that's gonna act as the lubricant when we're actually using the lathe. So the last kind of tricky thing to cover with regard to cleaning the protective film is the spindle bore. And this is kind of a tricky thing to clean, so I actually made a special tool for that. I call this the spindle bore mop, and it's almost got like what looks like a jag for cleaning a rifle bore on here. And this is 50 thou under the diameter of the inside of the spindle. And so I could put a blue shop towel over that, the paper type, spray WD-40 inside, and just basically push all of that protectant goop out of there, and then follow it up with the dry rag. And then it's a really nice thing to have around when you're running the lathe because you're gonna get a lot of chips and machining oil in there. And it's really nice to be able to uh, elegantly clean that kind of thing. Of course, before we can turn on the machine, we need power. And the nice thing about the PM1440 HVT2 is that it can run off either single phase or three phase and it's variable speed, right? That controller gives you the ability to either run the three phase or the single phase. And here I've only got single phase. So what I did was I tapped into the 30 amp circuit that's running the PM1440 GT and we ran power up and over and down and so what I've got here is I actually ran two lines. I ran 240 volts for the lathe, and then I ran 120 volt extension cord to just zip tie them together. I might get a little bit more elegant with things, uh, but this enabled me to get power hooked up. And for this machine, if you're familiar with three phase, there's L1, L2, and L3. Basically you take your two hots from your 240 single phase, you put them on L1 and L3, and you don't worry about L2 and there we go, it works. So uh, the 120 volt circuit is gonna be for my DRO, and I've also got some other things that I'm gonna be running, like a shop vac that can all go off of that. The advantage of a power drop is that now I can walk entirely around the lathe or use a hand truck or whatever and not run into any cords. So I have installed DROs on machines, and that's not something that I would ever want to do again. I probably will for custom applications. Precision Matthews pre-installed the scales on the machine and that, that's really where the pain comes in. So with that pre-installed, my cords were coiled here in the chip pan and that left just the installation of the display. And the display is pretty simple here. We've got the data cords that come in for your X and your Z. Your Z axis goes along the bed and your X goes perpendicular to the spindle axis and is what your cross slide directly uh, influences, right? Your diameter and your radius, that kind of thing. So I used my 120 volt uh, power tap down onto the machine, plug that in, plug these cords in, and then there's a bracket to install. They've got pre-drilled holes on the side of the compartment there. So now we have Z and X, DRO is good to go. So we're definitely getting closer to the goal at this point. I did quite a bit of additional degreasing on things like the faceplate and my adjustable three jaw chuck, which is super nice. Uh, that came with a, sort of a heavy oil. The four jaw chuck, as you see here, it didn't have a whole, it just had sort of a film of protectant on it. I had to install the cam lock cams for, for that. And what's nice about these, these cams is they have a little line scribed right where you, you screw it down, it's flush with the, the back of the chuck, and then you put a screw in to secure it. And uh, you know, the four jaw chuck is something that I use a lot for, for rifle smithing. And uh, so with the chuck in place, I, I clamped a piece of material and ran the spindle. So I think I probably was at about, I don't know, 1200 RPM. You know, I was, I was somewhere in the 12 to, 12 to 1500 RPM and let the machine run for an hour just to kind of complete the initial break-in period. And I'm going to be following this up with a complete oils change at probably about the 50 hours of runtime mark. So one of the super critical parts of this lathe prep for me was making access for my spider. This is a spider. I've got a dedicated video on this that I posted on makingwithmetal.com. A uh, really cool spider that has a pinch clamp design. So it just basically grabs the outside of the spindle, no set screws, no marking on the spindle. And the OD of the spindle on this lathe is exactly the same as that on the PM1440 GT. So I basically stole this 
from the PM1440 GT. Uh, the side cover appears to be identical, if not uh, equivalent. And so what I did on the back side was I cut out uh, this piece right here, which is gonna sit, let me see, yeah, like this. And so I cut around the top, around the sides, and uh, in that video where I talk about the spider, I go over the details. Basically, it's just cutting this piece out and then doing a little bit of masking and hitting it with some spray paint to kind of finish it off nicely. Now I drill a hole from the top so that I can get my 3 16 Allen key in there. And with just a quarter turn, that's gonna loosen the pinch clamp and allow you to withdraw the spindle from this side of the machine. Can make it easy to clean the spindle, that sort of thing. Uh, for the most part though, this just stays right on the machine for everything. So there you go, the lathe, the PM1440 HVT2 is set up, prepped, tested and ready to roll. And so what I'd love for you to do is to check out my follow on videos. I'm going to have a complete overview of the lathe where we'll go over the accuracy, we'll do some testing, we'll talk about all of the knobs, the feeds, the speeds, every single control on the machine just like I did for the PM1440 GT video. Okay, plus we're gonna be doing a bunch of gunsmithing jobs on this lathe. Look for those rifle builds with this lathe. What I'd like to know is how does this differ, if at all, from your lathe setup routine? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, we're on Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, where we've got unrestricted content, and Instagram. Make sure to follow us on all those channels. Ultimate Reloader also has a commercial solutions division serving law enforcement, the military, and the gun industry. We have some unique capabilities, including a comprehensive suite of recoil testing and evaluation capabilities, trigger profiling, and more. If you're interested in custom rifles like what we build here on the channel or gunsmithing services, you're gonna to wanna to go to rifles.ultimatereloader.com and get on the wait list. If you wanna learn lucrative gunsmithing like what I show here on the channel, including building custom rifles and Cerakote plus a whole bunch more, you're gonna to wanna to check out the Colorado School of Trades, schooloftrades.edu. Thanks again for watching.